It's a dusty light pastel <sighs> mauve. I'm Kristen, also known as Villain Vine, here on my YouTube channel where I chat about what I'm knitting on, what I'm sewing, what I'm making, or whatever other crafty rabbit hole I happen to be diving down this week. <laughs> and as always, I'm just, I'm just delighted that you are here. <laughs> so gather around, grab a cup of something, and let's chat. Uh, but first, just a couple of announcements. Uh, first up, we have our history make-along, which is currently underway. That is, of course, our year-long make-along, where we are all endeavoring to make something historically inspired. So pick a time period, a part of history that you are drawn to, and make something inspired by. It. All crafts are welcome, be it knitting, sewing, weaving, whatever your craft is, you are welcome to join. And there are two ways to do that. Uh, the first is to hop on over to the Volenvine Ravelry group, where all you have to do is partake in the chatter that's happening over there. Share photos of your whips, your FOs, share links to uh, patterns or projects you're thinking about casting on, or just chit chat. It's, it's just such a lively, chattery, place to be, and uh, I definitely recommend that you check it out. Uh, and the second way to join, if Ravelry's not your gym or you feel like double dipping, hop on over to Instagram and same rules apply, share your makes using the hashtag HistoryMAL. And come March 1st, 2021, I will lock the Ravelry thread and from both Instagram and Ravelry, I will choose a random winner, two r winners from each Instagram and Ravelry, to win a giveaway prize, which I'm still working on, but I promise it's gonna be good. Uh, so yes, uh, definitely check that out. If you're new here to the channel and it sounds like something you'd be into, first of all, welcome, welcome to my little corner of the interwebs. So glad you're here. Uh, there's still plenty of time to join, so do check it out. Uh, it's just been a lot of fun. Last but not least, this episode and this channel is sponsored by Skillshare, which is an online learning community platform where you can learn pretty much anything. And if you follow me on Instagram, you're probably aware that I have fallen deep down the still life photography rabbit hole. <sighs> yeah, guys, it's, it's real. I've learned so much when it comes to still life photography from Skillshare. They have so many classes. And as a small business owner, I use Skillshare all the time to learn things that I need to know in the moment to run my small business, Full and Vine Yarns, my hand dyed yarn company, uh, be it for social media marketing, for finances, for branding, uh, just they have it all. Uh, they have classes for stuff like calligraphy, illustration, uh, you name it, nine out of 10, it is on Skillshare. So if that sounds like something that you're into, click on the link in the description box below and you'll get to try Skillshare for two weeks, absolutely free, on yours truly, you're welcome, and thank you Skillshare. If you follow my YouTube channel, you're probably aware that I've been doing a little thing called Vlogmas, and I, it have admittedly been a little naughty when it comes to consistency and vlogmas this year. I, I mean, is this any surprise? I mean, last year and the year before, I flaked out midway through. This is not new. Uh, so uh, I will be back with more vlogs soon, just life and work. It's, it's, it's made vlogging just a little bit tricky this week. So uh, I haven't given up on it. I am taking some time off in the coming weeks leading up to Christmas and the new year. So uh, I promise there will be more vlogs coming down the pipeline. Um, but just a little heads up about that in case you've been wondering where I've been. But moving along to works in progress. Again, I've been completely monogamous on Dennis's sweater. It's coming along guys. Um, I am I am on Sleeve Island. So here's the front. The body is completely done. Yay, it's done. He tried it on, it fits perfectly. So the neckline, I, all of my worries that it was going to be too big or stretchy or wide or floppy, it was all in my head. And as I mentioned, I am on Sleeve Island, but that is not without a tale of woe. Last night, I had knit the sleeve all the way down to the point where I was ready to start knitting the cuff. And I had Dennis try it on to make sure the length was right. And he commented on how the, the sleeve was a little bit wide at the wrist. And I reassured him, I'm like, it's gonna be fine. I'm gonna knit the cuff and it's gonna, it's gonna cinch in because cuffs are elastic like that. So when I sat down to commence with knitting the cuff ribbing, I, you know, just for shits and giggles, <laughs> uh, revisited the pattern uh, to make sure that I didn't indeed need to decrease anywhere on the sleeve. And sure enough, Sure enough, the instructions said, I have to make decreases on the sleeves. 
I mean, Murphy's Law. I think I got a little cocky where I was reading the instructions and I said, you know, pick up all the stitches on, on the scrap yarn and knit in plain stockinette. And then my brain just checked out and said, I know what to do from here. Thank you very much, pattern. But anyway, anyway, all that to say that I'm very glad that I double checked the pattern because <laughs> I had it ripped back all the way. Ugh. But you know what? Silver lining, because I'm making decreases in the round, every round is just going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. So give it a day or two. I, I will be back to the point where I was last night. So Dennis will still get a sweater by Christmas. By Jove, he will get a sweater by Christmas. Again, the yarn is Lore by the Fiber Co. Um, Again, I cannot speak more highly about this yarn. It is just so scrummy and lovely to work with. It's DK weight, 100% uh, lamb's wool. I don't have the, the ball band with me at the moment, but trust me on this. Uh, it is 100% uh, lamb's wool and it just feels like really good workhorse yarn. Like it, this is gonna last him. Um, and it's it looks black in the light, but honestly, in person, it uh, is actually a dark navy blue uh, with, I wanna say blue-green undertones. Is that a thing like navy blue-green? If I could describe it, it's like a navy blue-green, very dark navy blue-green. So yeah, that is where I am with that. Um, and again, this little stitch marker here is just securing a drop stitch that I have to go back later and uh, secure, uh, Not not nothing to worry about. So. There's that. Like I said, I have been very monogamous knitting on Dennis's sweater, but that did not stop me from browsing Ravelry for potentially new cast-ons. <laughs> potentially? Potential new cast-ons. I think that is more grammatically correct, Kristen. Yes, we'll go with, we'll go with that. But anyway, uh, there are two patterns that I am seriously considering casting on. Uh, like I said last week, I have been in the market for a new cardigan, preferably black. Uh, however, I like the idea of knitting from stash. I have a lot of beautiful yarns in my stash that have just been languishing. And every time I see a pattern that I want to cast on, immediately I just want to buy some more yarn. But, but... I feel like I should give my stash some love this time around. So I have two patterns that I'm thinking about casting on and I did go stash diving and I have the perfect yarn for it. However, the colors, anyway, before I get into a rant about that, let, let's talk about the patterns, shall we? While we're on the topic of cardigans, uh, Caitlin Hunter, who whose patterns I absolutely adore. I think I've knit maybe five of her patterns in the past. She just, she never disappoints me, but uh, she just released a pattern called the Reluctant Homeschooler, which made me chuckle. Caitlin released this pattern very recently. I think it was actually last night. Uh, and she named it the Reluctant Homeschooler after the fact that, you know, a lot of parents are homeschooling their kids right now, given the current climate of Corona times. Uh, yeah, so you got a lot of parents stuck at home, homeschooling their kids, trying to juggle everything, a job, homeschooling, and among other things. So, you know, I do not envy any parents out there right now. If you are a parent, I salute you. You are amazing. You are essential. So, you know, kudos to you guys. You guys are amazing. So yeah, anyway, I thought it was brilliant that Caitlin came out with this pattern and I actually commented. I said, okay, not a parent here, but you know, do cat moms count? <laughs> so she she said, yes, yes, cat moms count. Uh, so do sneaker dads and, and the like. And you know, so I got, I got the green light that I could cast this on. Um, anyway, I fell in love with this pattern because it's so oversized and chunky and it's got these great big pockets and bonus points, it's knit out of bulky weight yarn. So it's a quick knit. I can probably crank this out for myself in no time. Uh, and I did go stash diving and I have this really lovely yarn that I picked up from, again, Webs when uh, my friend Tanya and I went to the New England Fiber Festival a whole year ago. I cannot believe it's been over a year since the New England Fiber Fest happened. Um, yeah, anyway, and it's this glorious bulky weight two-ply yarn, I wanna say. It's 100% Bolivian, Bolivian merino wool, and you get a lot of yardage in here. Uh, I think this is their sand colorway, but I almost wanna say like it's a very light, faint lilac. Um, I feel like it complements my little bit blah. blah, blah. <laughs> I feel like it complements my complexion um, pretty well. So you know, it's just it's a lot lighter than something I would normally gravitate towards. But when I saw it in the store, I just I fell in love with the delicateness of this colorway. It's like a it's a dusty light pastel <sighs> mauve. 
<laughs> it could be mauve, you guys. Um, no, but I would I would say it airs on the on the side of pastel uh, faded lilac. Um, although the colorway is actually called sand. Uh, but yeah, so I think I think I might knit the Reluctant Homeschooler out of this yarn. I have two skeins of it. Um, the pattern, the smallest size calls for, I believe, 770 yards. I'm probably gonna knit the size up, so that's around 900 yards. I have two of these, and one of these has 478 yards. So definitely enough. Uh, so I think this might get cast on. Yeah, this will be nice. It'll, it's light, a little lighter than something I would normally wear, but I think it'll be a nice contrast because I do wear a lot of dark colors. So yeah, that is one option. The next pattern to strike my fancy is a pattern by Andrea Mowry, and that is called Junction. Uh, it's just a beautiful color work uh, pullover with uh, some brioche detail. And it's been a while since I've knit brioche and I could, I could use a little brioching in my life. After you get through the brioche yoke, it goes straight into a color work flea pattern, uh, which I absolutely love. And Lo and behold, I have the exact yarn that this pattern calls for in my stash, uh, believe it or not. So when I went to the Edinburgh Yarn Festival, oh, the last one, so this, this year it was canceled, the one in 2019 that I attended, I picked up a sweater quantities worth of, and I'm, I'm going to butcher this again because I cannot get my French right. I apologize in advance, but, um, the Bichet and Boucher. Bichet, Boucher, <laughs> sorry. Here's the label so you can read it and pronounce it for yourself <laughs> and correct me down in the comments because I know they're coming. Um, but yes, this is 100% lamb's wool once again, but unlike uh, the lamb's wool in Dennis's sweater, this is very, very soft. I mean, it still has this kind of almost workhorse quality to it, but um, there's, I want to say an extra softness to it. I can't, I can't, I, I can't describe it. But I believe Andrea Mowry's version has uh, cashmere content in it. This does not have cashmere, but it is fingering weight, um, and it is the same brand. So I think, I think this will work just fine. Uh, and then I also have some Spin Cycle dyed in the wool in my stash, quite a bit of it. However, the size that I want to knit uh, requires two skeins and the only two skeins that I have are these guys, which is their Idle Nights colorway. And it's beautiful, but if you know me, I'm, I'm just, I'm not a blue person. And there's a lot of blue in here. There's purple, there's some yellows, but it's predominantly blue. Um, I think, I think it'll look lovely. I don't know. I, I'm on the fence, but I am thinking about de-stashing this uh, and just purchasing another colorway. But then I also have this colorway in my stash, which is very similar to uh, Idle Nights, but it's Pick Your Poison. It's more muted, uh, more like a blue-gray, lots of grays, uh, muted greens and purples. This combination speaks to me a lot more. However, um, I only have one of these and I would probably have to purchase another, but my only concern with that is the dye lots because if you are not familiar with uh, Spin Cycle, their dye lots are all over the place. And that's not a bad thing, it's really cool. I, I love how they vary uh, from skein to skein, batch to batch. Uh, you never know what you're gonna get. If I order another skein, it's just gonna be a little too bright or too dark. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't think it would matter. So, I'm, yeah, what do you guys think? Just go with it, go with the blue, purple, idle nights, or uh, de-stash and get another skein of pick your poison or de-stash them all together and get a totally new colorway. What do you guys think? I don't know, I'm a little bit on the fence. I still have time to think about it and make a decision, so it's not like I'm casting on tonight. Or will I? Decisions, decisions, I don't know. Um, but yes, those are the two patterns that I'm thinking about casting on, that I'm planning to cast on in the near future. So yeah, uh, and that my friends is all the creative content that I have to share with you this week. I have not made any progress on the coat that I'm sewing. I just hit a wall with the silk. I just, I needed to table it for a little bit, but fret not, I'm getting back to it. I just needed a break. So uh, that is coming together slowly but surely. Um, but otherwise no sewing has been made. I have just been 
having a lot of fun with still life photography. I guess we're moving into the blather segment where I chat about life stuff. So let's roll with it. Still life photography has taken over my life. Um, again, if you've been following my Instagram feed, I've just been going willy nilly with it, having a lot of fun experimenting with light, with uh, editing in Lightroom and lenses and um, I now have a little still life table set up in my craft room upstairs that it's it's just been up all week long and you know I've just been playing with different compositions. It's is wild. I don't know. Again, I'm just whenever I'm inspired to try something, I just go with it. I don't question it and you know, because you never you never know where it's gonna take you. Yeah, I've just been binge watching all the still life YouTube videos, the Skillshare classes, and I just I can't get enough. As I mentioned, I've just been completely blown away and inspired by Jamie Beck, who's been posting uh still lives and portraits on her Instagram feed for hashtag isolation creation. Uh, and she uses a macro lens for her camera. I believe she uses a 90 millimeter uh, macro lens. And as it turns out, a lot of still life photographers use macro lenses um, for their port for their, their still lives. And when it comes to lenses, I have a serious addiction. I love my lenses. They are my babies. Um, I can never have too many. They're, they're like little paint brushes. You know, sometimes you need a big one. Sometimes you need a little one and each brush does a different thing. Each lens does a different thing. So when it comes to still life photography, um, I've done my research and realized that a lot of still life photographers you like to use macro lenses. It captures all the little details in an image and I think that's, yeah. So um, I believe Jamie Beck has a 90 millimeter macro lens that she uses for her Sony and this is, it's, it's quite an expensive lens that I am not prepared to throw money at at this point. But um, I did hop on eBay and I did, was able to track down a Canon 100 millimeter macro lens that got great reviews. It's used, excellent condition. That should be arriving today. At the end of the day, it wasn't a huge investment for me. So I can, you know, play around with it, see if I like it, see if it goes anywhere. And if it does, I can always, I can always upgrade. Um, so yeah, that is going to be really exciting to play around with. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, when I started getting really into photography, um, you know, trying out all these different lenses, seeing what works, what doesn't work, which lenses I gravitate towards, which suit my style. Um, it's just been a really, really fun, interesting journey. I hate that word journey guys. I really do. But sometimes it's, it's applicable. So in this case, I believe it is. So yeah, anyway, um, I could go on for lenses. Maybe I'll start a separate YouTube channel for photography. What do you guys think? <laughs> Cause I could go on about, about cameras and lenses until the cows come home. But anyway, I'm going to end it there. Um, I hope you guys, wherever you guys are, you're having an awesome week. Uh, have a fun weekend planned. Thank you so much as always for hanging out with me. Uh, if you are new here, welcome. If you enjoyed this episode and haven't already, please feel free to like and subscribe down below. I put out a video for your viewing pleasure every week. And until the next video, happy knitting, happy sewing, happy making, happy picture taking, <laughs> and I will see you next time. Bye.